Hello there, welcome back to Jenny Designs with Paper. Thank you so much for stopping by my channel today. I'm working in my art journal, so get comfy and let's get crafty. This is the February 2023 Mission Inspiration Prompt. There are eight steps and five inspiration words, and I am going to work this set of ingredients in order from one to eight. Not a requirement, but my choice. So the first thing I have done is printed out my recipe or my project step list, and I decided to use the word eat as my inspiration word. And so I'm going to start with the first step, which is to scrape or smear paint across your page. So I have pulled out this very light blue distress paint. This is um, broken china or something like that. And I'm taking this used um, Amazon gift card, and I am just going to um, scrape the paint across and up and down. Um, eventually it will end up covering the majority of the center of the page with not too much of the white background showing through. I am creating my art journal page <clears throat> on a piece of um, mixed media paper. This is five and a half by eight and a half inches approximately. Um, a hundred years ago, <laughs> a friend of mine gave me an Amazon gift card, probably this one in my hand, <laughs> and I used it to purchase a roll of mixed media paper. That roll was 36 inches tall by 36 yards long. That's where all of my art journal pages come from. I've just taken that roll and trimmed them down to be about five and a half inches wide and work with that. So step two is to make marks with a comb or a brush. Um, I am pulling out another um, blue distress paint. Um, I don't remember what color this one is. And I'm using this mark making tool and the small comb um, marks on the one end. I'm going horizontal and then I am going vertical. These marks will not be um, super... They're not going to be a huge part of the page. That's what I'm trying to say. Um, they're not going to be a huge part of the page. I am going to heat set that real quick and move on to step number three, which is add fragments of torn newspaper. Now, because this paint was applied um, thinly, it has dried quickly, and I have pulled from my stash a whole bunch of scrapbook papers that look like newsprint. I don't have a lot of newspapers in my house, so um, like we don't subscribe to a paper, and I throw the free ones in the recycling about as soon as I get them. So what I am doing here is just taking pieces of this scrapbook paper and I am adding it in fragments to the bottom, about bottom third of my page. And I do not want to have any straight edges on the interior of the page. Once it has been trimmed down, the edges will be straight, but I don't want any of the other pieces to be straight. So I am going to go ahead and adhere these pieces of newsprint paper or faux newsprint paper <laughs> to my art journal page with some um, gel medium. This is a matte medium and it's in a gel format. And I'm just going to, one piece at a time, trying to make sure that there is a variation in print size and color of each piece so that it doesn't look too uniform. Um, Right now, it looks like all the pieces are about the same size, so I'm going to shake that up just a little bit by tearing some things down and overlapping them just a bit. Um, I don't have a specific plan in place, except that I wanted the paint to represent kind of the sky and the outside and this paper to kind of represent the ground. So that's my only, my only uh, plan. <laughs> All right, so I, I think I've um, about got all of the things on here that I want to add, maybe one more with a big um, big print on it, and then it's time to uh, dry it off and trim it out. Um, like I said, most of the edge piece or most of the pieces are torn edge, not straight edge. And then I'm going to heat set that, flip it over, and use my long scissors to go ahead and trim off those edge pieces. I am using my Tim Holtz long shears because they are non-stick and some of that gel medium might not be quite completely dry. So then all I have to do is take a baby wipe to my scissors and they clean up perfectly. 
once I have that trimmed out, um, it's time to go down to the next step, which is to draw a whimsical animal. Now, my drawing skills have not evolved since about second grade. So I opted to do a collage piece instead. So I have collage together this little gecko. If you live in the United States, you probably recognize him as the Geico gecko. And I have put on an ap put an apron on him, rather, and given him a serving tray. And behind his back is an ice cream cone. Because shouldn't everybody carry around a chocolate ice cream cone just in case they get hungry? I'm just saying, if it didn't melt so fast, I totally would. <laughs> I am going to go ahead and add some gel medium to my art journal page. Um, this is printed on um, a 30 pound copy paper. So it's not quite as thin as your um, super thin copy paper, but it's still just copy paper. So I do have to be careful um, to prevent the, the gecko from just rolling up into weird little bumps and creases. So once I have him covered up with gel medium, and I'm sure that, <clears throat> sorry, I am sure that all of his arms and legs and tails and things have stuck down properly, um, I will be ready to um, heat set this gel medium and move on to my next step. Um, the next step in our um, art journal page, um, recipe, I don't know what to call it, <laughs> is to add a single focal word. And like I said, I chose the word eat, which is kind of obvious because you've got a tray of food and an ice cream cone. Now, probably I should have put that tray on a little straighter, but you know, it's all good. I like it. Now, I decided to handwrite the word eat. I figured if I don't have whimsical drawing because, you know, I'm not super confident in my drawing skills, I could have a whimsical word. And I pulled out a, just a regular old Sharpie marker to add that to my art journal page. And fortunately, I did not dry it enough. And there was still some not completely dry gel medium on my page. And by the time I get to the second half of the letter A, I have completely destroyed my Sharpie marker. <clears throat> yeah. So when you get gel medium on the nibs of your pens and markers, it absorbs that glue into the fibers of the nib and closes them up and no more ink will come out. So I'm grateful that I grabbed a Sharpie as opposed to any other pen in my drawer because some of those others would have made me cry a lot, but I then had to come up with, okay, how do I finish this? <laughs> it's not, this is black Sharpie marker. And if you have children, you know, the damage and the um, absolute tenacity that the ink in a Sharpie marker hangs on to all things with. Um, I continue to hope I could, I could finish it, but yeah, it was just not going to happen. So I decided to go into my paint drawer. I pulled out some black acrylic paint and a small paintbrush. And I am just going to paint this on with black acrylic paint. <clears throat> Not as forgiving as a pen or a marker with the nib. And the little open space in my A is, you know, questionably smaller now than it was before. But... It worked. And actually, I think I like it better. It's a little bit deeper. It's a little bit darker. And that Sharpie was kind of being absorbed into the not quite dry gel medium. So it um, faded back quite a bit. So I decided to go ahead and go over the E with the paint so that they all look like they were created with the same um, pigment. And then I've got to get the, the last letter T on there. Um, I'm, when I am trying really hard, my handwriting is, is neat. However, <clears throat> when I write, my brain is usually going so fast that my hands cannot keep up neatly. So my handwriting, most of the time, 
is not awesome. And you've heard me say this before, but Straight Lines and I, we are on a only on the road um, kind of relationship, right? I can stay inside the lines on the road and that's about it. So, yeah, it's whimsical. <laughs> okay, I did pull my heat tool out and dry that back and I added a, dried the page a little bit more. And the next step is to add paint to a stencil. So I have grabbed this sunburst stencil um, and I'm going to put the center dot on top of my gecko image in an attempt to make it look like there's this burst of, of color coming from behind the gecko and the chocolate ice cream. So I have some yellow distress paint, I think this is wild honey, and a piece of um, a wedge of sponge. And I'm just going to dab that into this stencil with the sponge being careful not to go over my letters too much and, and also not to get the yellow paint on my gecko and my ice cream. I don't really intend for this to look like the sunshine, but more like a burst of something coming out from behind the gecko. Um, so when I get the top right corner done, I decide to go ahead and add some of that, um, flourish that excitement those rays of energy <laughs> down in the bottom left hand corner as well and i think that kind of helps make it not read like hey there's a little bit of sunshine in this corner hopefully it, it kind of pulls that that stencil work away from the whole sunshine idea the next step on our list is to add white highlights or splashes so I decided to pull out my white gel pen and add some white highlights to my letters. I did not really pay attention to where I was adding them. I just put, you know, lines. I just put lines. <laughs> it does make the letters pop just a little bit. Um, probably not the most artistically correct way of adding highlights to fat letters wasn't paying any attention to any type of uh, light source or where a highlight or shadow would be. I'm just throwing some white gel pen on there. And then because that's not enough, I thought, what else can I do to this for highlights? And I didn't really feel like putting highlights anywhere else on my page with the white gel pen. And like, I was afraid I had totally killed this one, but whew, the paint was dry and the pen did move again. So I decided to go ahead with some splats, splashes of white. So I pulled out my gesso, I added some water to it, and I got my fan brush, and I'm going to add some paint splatters to the front of my page. Now I added a little more water than I wanted to originally, so I did not have great, um, the splashes weren't awesome. So I added a little bit more gesso to my work surface and then, and then, and then <laughs> the white splashes were wonderful. They were so wonderful that they went all over my work surface, all over my misty stamp position, all over my Fisker's trimming tool, and even some up on my laptop, which is at the very back of the desk that I work on. So yeah, there's that. <laughs> the And last step in our recipe or our list of instructions is to create a border from washi tape. And like every good paper crafter, I have a drawer full of washi tape. I have this very narrow, it's like a quarter inch, no, well, maybe half inch, probably quarter inch. I don't know. I have some green washi tape. And of course I've got to go with the green. Hello, the gecko's green, green. I mean, green, green. Yeah. Even the apron on the gecko is green. I just like the greens. I am going to just take this very narrow washi tape and put it right along the edge of my page. I am trying to keep it at the edge so there is no art journal poking out from the other side. I am making these um, pieces of tape intentionally longer than the page because if you know anything about washi tape, you know that it is fabulous for adding texture and design elements and pops of color. It is not fabulous for maintaining its stick. So I have to do something 
to make sure that this washi tape border does not peel off at some point in the future. So my plan is to um, get the washi tape um, all along the edges and then fold those pieces down onto the back of my art journal page. Um, I am folding them as straight as I can without them hanging over the front of the page. Um, nice crisp, you know, push use my thumb to make sure it's a nice crisp fold. Some of those washi pieces are a little bit longer than others because obviously eyeball measuring is also not my strength. So, you know, whimsical drawings and, and straight lines and what eyeball measuring. <laughs> Um, I decided also that I was a little bit worried about those tails um, peeling up on the back of the page. So I popped into my desk drawer and pulled out my scotch tape because scotch tape fixes everything. You know, scotch tape and band-aids. Just ask my children. They will tell you. I'm going to cover up the washi tape ends with a piece of scotch tape in each corner. And that will just make sure that that washi stays down and doesn't peel up from the backside as well. Now, you'd think that I was satisfied by now, right? No, <laughs> I am worried. This washi tape has been in my drawer for a long time and I could tell it was not particularly sticky. So I decided to go over the washi tape and onto the page, the edge of the page with some gel medium. This will just kind of create a seal along that side the inside edge of the washi tape and hopefully that will help the the border stay put. Another good thing about adding a little coat of gel medium to the washi tape is that it's adding a little bit more of that. Um, I'm sealing my page right I'm, I'm making sure that all of those edges are sealed down that they are protected that they will um, not peel up or, or peel off. And I guess that's good, right? Um, this, <laughs> I've had this jar of gel medium in my craft room since this is the very first jar of, of gel medium I purchased. And you can finally see the bottom of that jar there. My goal is to use up all of my supplies this year instead of buy new ones first. <laughs> I did go ahead and heat set that and I tried to take some of those um, white splats off the gecko space. Didn't work super great. Now I'm just running through the um, list of instructions to make sure I added all eight steps to my art journal page. I scraped and smeared the paint. I made marks with a comb. I add newspaper. I added a whimsical animal. I have a single focal word. I had paint through a stencil. I have white highlights and splashes and I created the washi tape border. So now I will tape down the instruction list onto the back of my art journal page so that when I am looking back at my art journal pages, when I'm old and, and more senile than I am now, I will remember what prompted the creation of this page. And my last step is to sign it. I've pulled out a zig pen here and I'm just going to sign my name and date it with February 23 because that's the month that I created this art journal page for. So this is my Mission Inspiration February page for the Mission Inspiration Facebook group. I hope you enjoyed the video today. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. I have a couple of other videos here I think you might enjoy, as well as a subscribe button. I would love it if you would subscribe to my channel, leave me a comment below, and give me a thumbs up. Thank you so much. Have a really fabulous day.